Welcome back, compadres. Today we're talking reservoir engineering. We're going to build off of our linear flow interpretation for hydraulically fractured wells to get reservoir characterization parameters such as fracture half length, permeability, stimulated reservoir volume, and recovery factor. And we're doing this all with gas production decline data. So we don't have to shut in the well and get this stuff. We can do it with our decline curves, with our reciprocal rate cumulative production plot. So guys, get amped up. This is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and get started. Today we're going to perform reservoir characterization using the reciprocal rate cumulative production linear flow plot. So if you recall previously, we put our production data on a reciprocal rate cumulative production plot as shown here for linear flow. So linear flow is for hydraulically fractured wells. So after we plotted this data, we put our fit, our best fit line, a straight line, which shows us the transient region or the linear flow region. And then beyond that, we fit it with ARPS. But the important concepts I want you to think about as we go through this is this straight linear line right here that we fit to our early time data. This is important for characterizing the reservoir from this line and this point right here, which is the time at which the end of linear flow ends, we can get permeability, fracture half length, stimulated reservoir volume, original gas in place per cluster, and also recovery factor. And so what we're really after more than anything is permeability and fracture half length, because fracture half length tells us how far, it's important for well spacing. You need to know this number in order to drill future laterals and space them apart appropriately. So that's what we're really after is these two things right here. The stimulated reservoir volume and recovery factor that comes along with how far your clusters are spaced. And if you don't know what clusters are, we'll go into that uh, in a little bit. But the important equations in this analysis are shown here. And I know it's, it can be daunting to look at this, but this these equations and things, they came from this resource by Callard and Rodriguez 2012. And uh, that reference will be listed in the last slide. But this is where we're getting these equations. This is what allows us to perform reservoir characterization using the reciprocal rate cumulative production plot. And I suggest you go read this if you're interested. It'll help you understand why I'm doing this. But from the infinite acting region, this straight line, you're going to be able to get permeability and because all you need is the time to the end of linear flow and then you have your fluid properties porosity and this ye is going to be your distance of investigation which you'll see in the next slide you'll get a visual of that and then these fluid properties because we're using we're doing this of a natural gas well or a gas well the author calculates these fluid properties at the average fracture pseudo pressure and in order to obtain that you have to solve this equation right here and uh, without going into too much detail you have to apply a numerical method to do this in this case I apply the false position method and we'll go into that later so you can get permeability just knowing your time to the end of linear flow and then you can get your square root of KXF, which is your square root of permeability times fracture half length, you can get that from using the slope. The slope in this case is MRRC, so it's the slope of this line, and your fluid properties, your temperature, your formation height, and, and once you get that, you can essentially divide this result by the square root of k and you get fracture half length so pause the video and work through that calculate exercise it's just algebra and then once you kind of have those values it's important or it's not important but after you get fracture half length you can essentially get drainage area original gas in place and the stimulated reservoir volume and it's important when doing this analysis to realize that you need some data from the field. You need your cluster spacing or your distance of investigation here. That's that's what you're going to have to have to do a for these numbers for drainage area, original gas in place, and SRV to to be uh, reasonable. If you don't have those values, you you can't really calculate this. 
And so the author, basically what he wants or what he models in this situation is he's imagining evenly spaced clusters. So this is your, your clusters, your, your fractures, essentially what it is. He's, he's assuming evenly spaced clusters. And then um, he's also assuming that it's, uh, this is kind of the model he's using. This is his stimulated reservoir volume. So the stimulated reservoir volume is basically the volume of this rectangular prism, uh, uh, so to speak. And so if we look at it from the top down, we can see what he defines as our distance of investigation. He's basically saying between these fractures, I have linear flow and I have a no flow boundary. So in our transient or our linear flow region, we just have flow going perpendicular to the fractures and our distance of investigation is going to be from our fracture our cluster space to midway between these two clusters and so that's the model that he's using and um, that simplifies the problem down significantly so the steps to do this analysis, I'm not going to go into every little detail. You can pause the video and read through this, but this kind of explains what we're doing to characterize our reservoir. So I suggest you just briefly look at this so that you have a basic idea of what I'm going to do when we get to the Excel analysis. And so this is your reference uh, where you can find these equations and uh, the theory behind this. It's written by these two guys and it's called permeability and completion efficiency determination from production data in the Haynesville, Eagerford and Avalon shells. So let's go ahead and step into the Excel analysis. So this is the linear flow interpretation we did previously. We fit the straight linear flow line and ARPS boundary dominated to our production data and the important pieces of information from this for reservoir characterization is going to be this point right here, the time at the end of linear flow, and also the slope of our linear flow line, straight line right here, shown in red. And this is not the best fit to this production data, but we're going to go ahead and just go with it to show you the mechanics of how to do this. So we got our slope, and also we got our time at the end of linear flow which is going to be right here. This is our time at the end of linear flow calculated from our reciprocal rate cumulative production plot and if you don't remember how to do that go look at the previous video I explain how to do that. And so these are the equations that are important to us to do reservoir characterization using our linear flow interpretation. And this, these equations are slow, shown on slide two, but I wrote a VBA function for each of these. Um, this is really simple. You just put in, it's just a simple function, one-liner. This is a simple one-line function too. And uh, this is the one that, that uh, you calculate fluid properties at, is this average pseudo pressure. And this is kind of difficult to calculate because um, it requires numerical methods to do it. But I wrote a VBA function for that. So let's go ahead and look at the VBA code. So if you press Alt F11, or if you look at the, the code on the website, I've went ahead and I've wrote functions for each one of those. So this is our permeability function right here. It takes in our time to, end in line, our time to the end of linear flow and like I said it's a one-liner and then our square root of KXF it's a one-liner as well and this average pseudo pressure I call it PFP pressure which is solving this equation right here it basically used the false position method to it's a root finding method to do this and so um, without going into too much detail uh, I'd open up a numerical methods book and kind of review how to do this but it takes your upper limit and your lower limit in this case I'm gonna take it at my lowest um, it's gonna take my lowest pressure which is gonna be my well flowing pressure and it's gonna take my reservoir pressure or my upper pressure and it's going to apply numerical methods to determine 
when our root using this equation right here is going to determine where these it's going to iterate until it finds values where these two add up to zero and so I may go into uh, I may do another video on this but without going into too much detail this is what it is I suggest you step through it if you understand this you're well into being a top dog engineer and I'll tell you that much but let's go ahead and go into the analysis so the first step is you need cluster spacing you need to know how far apart your clusters are and that's really what breaks or makes this analysis when you're trying to determine uh, do reservoir characterization so it's important to get this right in this case I didn't have the values for this well so I just assumed it was a 1000 foot lateral with four evenly spaced clusters that means they're going to be 250 feet apart in our distance of investigation which is the no flow boundary between two fractures is going to just be half of our fracture spacing as shown here so it's going to be midway between two fractures so that's going to be half of 250 so it's sp these fractures are spaced 250 feet apart but the no flow boundary is halfway in between that's what we're assuming and so bang once you have that information you can start this analysis the next thing you want to do is you want to calculate your average pressure from your average pseudo pressure and so that's that via VBA function we wrote so it's going to be PFP pressure is what I call it and it's going to take our lower pressure in this case it's going to be our well flowing pressure our initial reservoir pressure is going to be our upper pressure temperature gas gravity and our impurities I'm going to assume is going to be equal to zero so bang there we have it and you can see here our average pressure let me just write it over here you can see how this is going to be different from our average which is going to be initial pressure plus well flowing pressure divided by two and so that's our average pressure this is going to be our average pressure that we use to calculate fluid properties at from this equation right here so we're using pseudo pressures our basis or natural gas and that's the key point you need to remember from this is is we use pseudo pressures in natural gas in this case we're calculating our average pressure from our average pseudo pressure so it's going to be a little bit different than say our average pressure <laughs> if that makes any sense if it doesn't don't worry about it we'll step into it later and then our pseudo pressure we're going to need this to help us determine square root of KXF as shown here it takes average or the delta pseudo pressures so it's going to take temperature pressure so that's our initial pressure gas gravity initial pressure gas gravity and I'm gonna freeze these because I'm just gonna jump it down zero zero and let's see zero no impurities bang so we'll carry that down one and that's gonna calculate our average or our pseudo pressure from our well flowing pressure and so the difference between the two is going to be just basic subtraction bang so that's our delta pseudo pressure so now that we've gotten that now we need to calculate our fluid properties such as viscosity and total system compressibility from our PFP our average fracture pressure so in this case I'm going to use a correlation I call it UG we've done this in previous videos so this is going to be our PFP temperature gas gravity impurities 0 0 and 0 so that's our viscosity at our fracture average fracture pressure and then our 
let's see here. We're going to calculate our gas compressibility using a correlation. PFP, temperature. You can see it's it's getting pretty repetitive now. We're we're uh, flying through this, and it it's really not that hard, guys. That's that's why this interpretation is so cool because it really is uh, simple and easy to do. So our VBA function total compressibility. So our oil saturation is going to be zero. Oil compressibility zero. Gas saturation is going to be this value right here. Gas compressibility, we just calculated it. Water saturation right there. And then our water compressibility, we just assumed a value of 3.6 to the negative 6. And then our formation compressibility, and bang, there we have it. So once we have these fluid properties, now we can use these equations over here and to begin to begin characterizing our reservoir. So we're going to determine permeability first. I call it permeability linear flow. It's just this equation right here. It's going to take porosity, 12%. It's going to take our viscosity. We just calculated that. Our total system compressibility, our distance of investigation, which is right here, and our time at the end of linear flow, which we calculated in the previous video is that right there. So bang, so that's our permeability right there, 0 0.0002 millidarcies. Okay, so now after we have that, we can go ahead and calculate our square root of KXF right here. And so I wrote a VB function for that. I'm going to call it square root of KXF. And it's going to take temperature, formation height, or formation thickness, pay zone thickness. It's going to take our slope. of our line, which is right here. It's going to take porosity, viscosity, gas viscosity, and also total system compressibility, and our delta pseudo pressure. So bang, that's our square root of KXF right there. So we just calculated it with this equation right here. The next thing we want to do is we want to go and calculate our fracture half length. This is important for spacing, and so I'm going to call it, um, it's just going to be our square root of KXF divided by the square root of our permeability. So we take our square root of KXF and we divide it by the square root of permeability. And that is our fracture half link right there, 7,510 feet. And that seems pretty large. And we're doing this interpretation on a gas well that we don't know if it was hydraulically fractured or not. And so you need to keep that in mind. I'm just showing you the mechanics of how to do this. This is actually a radio flow well. So in reality, you know, this interpretation will not follow through, but we're going to go through this show you the mechanics so that when you do encounter a well that fits this interpretation you know how to do it. And so the next thing you want to do is you want to calculate your drainage area. Your drainage area of, of a fracture is simply going to be if we go over here and look at this right here our drainage area which is just going to be the surface area from the top down view is going to be two times our fracture half length times two times our distance of investigation because we're, we're trying to calculate the drainage area of one cluster and so our no flow boundary is between two fractures so in reality 
your no flow boundary on this side is going to be y sub e so 2 times y sub e times 2 times x of f that's going to be your drainage area of a cluster so it's going to be 2 times so in reality it's going to be 4 times y sub e times our fracture half length and then so if we want to convert this to acres we got to divide it by 4 the 3,560 so that's our drainage area of one cluster 86 acres and the idea behind this is to calculate your original gas in place for one cluster and then multiply it by the number of clusters to get your your stimulated reservoir volume which is this entire volume in this rectangular prism so that's the way I'm approaching it. You can do it one of a multitude of ways. I'm doing it this way. So after you've calculated your drainage area using this equation over here, right here, you want to uh, determine your original gas in place per cluster. And so we're looking at it on a cluster basis. And so this is the equation we're using right here where we need to calculate our, forma our gas formation volume factor at initial reservoir pressure. And so uh, I wrote a VB function for that in a previous video. It's going to be called BG. It's going to take your temperature, our initial pressure, which is 3500 gas specific gravity our impurities which is going to be zero and so that's our initial formation volume factor and then after that I can calculate the original gas in place with this equation right here so I wrote a VB function for that I call it OGIP or OGIP it's going to take our drainage area in acres formation thickness or pay zone thickness, porosity, water saturation, and initial formation volume factor. And so bang. So this is our original gas in place of a cluster. So if we look at our little cartoon over here, it's going to be how much this cluster right here drains, uh, which is going to go from our distance is going to stretch from a fracture to our no flow boundary on both sides and so in order to get our stimulated reservoir volume we just multiply this original gas in place per cluster by the number of clusters and so this is how we're calculating it right here with this equation uh, there's multiple ways to do this I just chose to do it this way um, you can you know, eat quite easily. Just take your the length of your lateral and multiply it by your tw two times your fracture half length times your formation height. Uh, you can do it that way. Um, there's just you know, just it's just a, a volume. That's all you you really have to to realize is is that's all we're we're looking at. So our SRV is going to be our original gas in place per cluster multiplied by the number of clusters which is four in this case and bang so this is our stimulated reservoir volume after we get this we can determine recovery factor and so the recovery factor is simply just going to be our EUR which we determined previously divided by our stimulated reservoir volume and bang so our recovery factor in this case for this well is 16 percent and so um, I'm not saying this is a a well that exhibits linear flow. You know, in fact, it it's actually a radial flow well. But I wanted you to, to show you the mechanics on how to do this, so that you can do it for uh, wells that you have all the data for. In this case, we needed our distance of investigation, which relied on us knowing the cluster spacing. Uh, if you don't have that, you really can't perform this type of interpretation accurately. Uh, but it's still should be able to predict reserves appropriately and so just keep that in mind although you may not be able to get reservoir characterization parameters you can still get EUR using this interpretation and so guys um, I know that was a long video I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something about horizontally fractured wells and how to get reservoir characterization parameters 
using production decline data. And so that's really what I want to emphasize on this video is, is you don't have to shut in the well using this, the way this author approached this. And uh, if you like the video, please subscribe and I'll catch you next time and uh, we'll continue to build on reservoir engineering uh, that way um, you can get a feel of, of how this stuff works because I know in school they don't really explain it too well but uh, I'm here to help you guys so um, catch me in the next video adios